We're ready to install the pan. And we've got a little work to do on the gaskets. Uh, the gasket is a little long uh, to suit me. Uh, the holes aren't, it isn't exactly lined up with the hole. So I come in here and trim off just enough to where my holes will line up. And it's almost touching the crankshaft. And I'm happy with how that turned out. Uh, we'll now take our gaskets to the pan and I'm going to put some marks on it and punch a hole in it where my pan rope seal will not make contact with the, with the uh, cardboard gasket, but rather it makes contact with the modern rope seal that I've got in the front plate and those two, and I'll leave that uh, gasket that I install in the pan proud to where it'll collapse and form a better seal, or at least. So I trim my gasket to where it'll come up and get close to the crankshaft and I'm going to set my gaskets up here on the pan and I'm going to mark where that modern rope seal fits on both gaskets and I know that I'll cut a bit of a radius nut back into the bolt hole but I'll cut that out to where it tends to be the shape of what our rope seal is I've got a hole punch here then I'm just going to come in here and or a gasket cutter I guess is actually what that is Just check them real quick and make sure that my rope seal will stick up a little proud through there so it makes contact with the other one and that looks pretty good. So our rope seal is a Teflon impregnated material and I just flatten it a little bit. Helps get it into the groove that it fits in. And then I'll push it into place. And I'll take a socket and just kind of seat it in. Not so much that I've completely collapsed it to where it won't come out and make contact with the crankshaft. just get it seated in and it's quite proud so I'm just going to take a box knife and I, and I don't want to cut it flush I'm going to try to cut it a little proud about the thickness of that gasket maybe a little bit more and this takes a pretty sharp knife to do this and watch that you don't cut yourself kind of saw through it. So if you'll notice I've cut that off to where when I set my gasket on it's still still a little proud. 
and I'll, I, I think this helps in when these two pieces go together the pan matches up it kind of compresses that and uh, my opinion is it gives a little better chance of sealing up and so I'll do the other side here got the other side cut and I'll just check and see and again I've got it proud so that part's done now would be the time to install the spec inspection cover it's a lot easier to do it where you can access things inside and out because you've got the horseshoes that are list, loose and I will mention that this one's had a stud welded in it at some point in time and it's been radiused out so it was probably on an engine that had a Model A crank in it yeah, or maybe even a scat crank you've got to get a little clearance here so it doesn't hit the rod throws or the counterweights but this would be the time to install all this stuff and in this application uh, we've decided we want to use a couple of uh, of internal uh, oil lines so we've got a little extra oil to the front of the engine there are several ways to get more oil to the front of the engine and there are several different kits that are out there I kind of like these because they're hidden they don't show uh, but uh, if you uh, an extra oil line is a benefit I've tore apart a lot of engines that uh, in the standard Ford internal oil line that I've found lint and cotter keys and anything and anything that's ever fell into the engine will work its way up into that funnel and and literally they were completely plugged out plugged off but they had an external oil line of somewhere of some sorts uh, off the hogshead or well there's several different types that are available but having that second oil line if one of them plugged up you got a chance of still keeping the lube and the engines didn't fail because of lack of lubrication they were just tired and wore out and when you broke into them gee the, the, the Ford funnel was completely plugged up so extra oil line doesn't hurt anything and and these are made to where they're either a three dipper the, the same one will work for a three dip or a four dip and it's uh, they send a set of instructions and the rings are, are what hold it in place <coughs> horseshoes or rings or whatever and they do send you a set of instructions with them and they tell you that uh, that you can do this in the car and how to go about it or or we won't follow that because we've got the pan off but it does tell you that if a three dip pan is used you use notches two four and six and if it's a four dipper pan you use notches one three and five so this is a three dip pan we're going to use two four and six first hole would go into two and this might get a little interesting seeing how we have a stud involved here and then that all worked out just wonderful okay so we have our uh, internal oil lines installed and now it would be uh, a matter of putting the inspection cover on uh, again this is this motor is not uh, is being built more for demonstration purposes and we'll have it apart a number of times but you would run a bead of sealer on the pan or on both sides of the gasket or on the pan and the inspection cover to seal this up uh, I'm not going to use any sealer because it's a demonstrator pan. Uh, there are uh, some different means of being able to seal up all of these bolts that are going to go through the inspection cover. Um, one of the vendors furnishes a, a rubber neoprene gasket with a washer that 
forms a seal when we get in there. There's another supplier that puts together a kit that utilizes uh, uh, a bolt with an O-ring. Okay, and then what we're going to use is just a bolt kit and bolt kit inspection cover bolt kit that's just just a regular old bolt uh, you can seal these up also by uh, after you've got the gasket all glued up take take and run you a good old bead around the threads on this thing and run it on up in there and it'll form a seal uh, this is a source of a leak so you need to you need to do something to uh, keep that from leaking out but in this case we're just going to use a pan gas, just a gasket, and we're going to put it together dry. And so it makes it real easy with it off the car. Uh, you can access everything, and I can just simply throw that up. But I would continue putting all of the hardware into it and going ahead and just locking that down permanent. Uh, I'm done when I drop it on the pan. There's uh, for the pan on the engine. There's no need to get back in here, or there shouldn't be because we did such a wonderful job on building our engine. All right, we're ready to install our pan. We've modified our gaskets, cut them to where things will fit nice. Uh, again. Uh, this is a depth for demonstration purposes only, but I would run a bead of sealer on this gasket. Uh, both, both sides of the gaskets are on the block and on the pan. So we'll form a, try, try to stand, try, try to do our best to not have a Model T that marks its territory, but uh, that's kind of hard to do. Uh, I can get them to seal up for about three to 5,000 miles and then they start leaking from all the places. But, I'm not going to use any sealer, okay? Uh, I'm going to make sure that I get some grease on my seal. And I'll daub a little bit of grease up here on the crankshaft. And we've got our inside oil lines installed. And they do cause a little bit of interference trying to get it past the field, uh, the field coil. So you gotta kind of hold your lips just right and kind of twist it on and it'll go in. If you just try to drop it straight on, it, it won't fit. And I've just got some punches here that I wanna get my gasket moved around where all the holes are lined up. Okay, so I've got my gasket in place and the way that I installed the pan, and I believe it to be probably the correct way, is the first thing I'll do is I will take the two bolts that go on each side of the crank and install them and I'm not going to tighten them down but I want to run them down snug so I've got two bolts installed in the front and I can move this pan a whole bunch and, but still be able to drop bolts in it there's a lot of play here okay so I'm, I'm able to wiggle and jiggle this pan and put it on anyway and we went to great lengths to straighten it all up and square it so I take the fourth main no gasket I'm just going to slide my fourth main in place and if I have the pan kicked over you can see it doesn't just drop in and that's just slopping the bolt holes. 
So what I like to do is go ahead and take a couple of bolts, put the fourth vein in, so I now have it centered at the front and I now have my fourth main in play to where when I, I can slip that fourth main, it'll just drop in and out of there. Now don't run that down tight, I'll just leave it loose because I'm going to check it periodically as we go through the process of tightening everything down. But if that moved back there, then I would be out of alignment. So it's now a matter of, of coming in here gasket out of the way there and I would just start finger tight just install all the nuts and bolts on both sides of the pan so I'll continue to do that uh, uh, remember on the commentator where the commentator is, that bolt goes the head down and the nuts on the bottom so it doesn't short up the contacts. But I want to install all these bolts and then we'll start snugging it down and as I'm snugging it I'm still going to come back here periodically and just check to make sure that I can get my fourth vein to slip in and out of the out of its pocket. Alright, so I've installed all of our nuts and bolts with the exception of the engine stand. There's a couple that I can't get to and I'll have to get them tightened down. I'll put a C-clamp on the back side here and clamp it together and once it's all dried and cured then and get it off the engine stand I'll put those two in. But So I've got them all in. My, my fourth thing slides real good and I'm just going to take everything down and in a couple of steps I'm going to just come through and snug things down first and not really tighten and I'll start at the front and I'll work my way to the back alternating between sides After tightening all the bolts in the pans, with the exception of the two on this side that I can't get to because of the engine stand, again I want to make sure that my fourth man drops into the pan. That tells me that at least I've got the pan on here square and true. This drops into place with no effort. I'm not pushing on the pan or having to pry it over. So it's in center line with everything else that's going on, the crankshaft, main shaft, flywheel transmission, everything's in alignment. So our next our next uh, step would be to put our hogshead in place. 